Howdy once again, it's Tubal Cain, Mr. Pete 222, with episode number 31 of my This and That series. And it's been several months since I've done one of these, but I received a wonderful gift from Bruce Whitman. I know he's down under in Australia, and he sent me two items here. One being this gear gauge. And many of you follow him on YouTube. Check out his videos if you haven't already. But... Get her out, Australia, it says, and this is a gear indicator, 20 degree dimetral pitch. So if you take a gear of unknown pitch and match it up here, and it goes right in there, doesn't go there, goes right there, and that's a 12 dimetral pitch. Hmm, yeah, that's one that I cut several years ago in a video. Check that out if you haven't seen it. Also he sent me the engineer's black book and boy there's a lot of good information in there. And you can get one of those I think online from uh, it's called uh, engineer's black book. Awful lot of good information in there reduced to a smaller size handbook rather than the real thick machinery handbook but then this fell out on my lap when I was sitting in the chair reading it, and it's a gauge for sharpening drills. And there's the standard 118 degree point angle, but several different angles here for different materials. And some holes there, and so that, there's a handy little gauge that was in the back of this book. So I thank you. It was back here in this little pouch. Thank you, Bruce, ever so much for those two gifts. I really will appreciate them and use them. Ben Butler from down in Morristown, Tennessee, sent me this neat steam engine book, and it's from England. So there's some good reading as the weather gets cold here. All about steam engines, and there's James Watt. And that's where it all started. Thank you, James Watt, and thank you, Ben Butler, for that nice little booklet. Several weeks ago, when I was up in Ironfest at Union, Illinois, I linked up with Ted Secor. Now, he's a dentist, and I've met him one other time, and we hung around that day and had a good time together, but he's a dentist up in Milton, Wisconsin. So he brought along these for me. Last year, you may remember an item that he gave me for... Uh, mixing a uh, dental amalgam or something like that. That was in my What Is It series. But Ted sent these dental picks, I guess they're called, along. And he says these are just real handy in the shop. Look at the weird shape. And he said they're particularly handy for removing uh, little O-rings and things like that. So these are quite costly. And uh, when the tips break or get dull or something, you know, he has to move on and get some more. So, thank you Ted, and I'll see you next year. Those will be handy at my bench. Just 30 minutes ago, before I started making this video, I received a package in the U.S. mail, and it was in good condition, believe it or not, but it came from my brother Jan in Cody, Wyoming, and the last time he was here to visit, we had discussed how to make a bevel on the milling machine without tilting the head. Now it's very easy to tilt the head, but we do not like tilting the head if we can get away with it because you have to tram it back in and that's uh, a chore. So I had been using this bit for 45 degree bevels, but I can't get a very wide one because of this. So all of a sudden here in the mail he sent me this carbide cutter with three inserts in it and I took a sample cut and it just cut like butter and made a beautiful bevel there. So thank you, Jan, and that's an idea for some of you people, although I, this is used, and I'm sure it costs plenty to buy new. Also, when I was at Ironfest, I ran into a man by the name of Andy Bittinger, and he's from Minnesota, and he was trying to sell some of these cutters here. I'm not even sure what they are. But they're tapered, so he gave me several, and probably never use them. They're quite large here. I believe this is a number four or five more taper. But he does have them for sale, 
and they're only well he said he changed the price to five bucks it'll cost you more for shipping so if you're interested there's some information and I see that uh, some other um, Keith Rucker had some of these he showed on the video the other day they're brand new and we're not sure what they're for but he had a bunch of them and do not contact Andy after let's say New Year's 2017 because this video will be obsolete by then. In a video some time ago I was lamenting the loss of nice heavy boxes like this that had the reinforced corner. Well then all of a sudden in the mail from Randy out in Greensboro, Maryland and I can't quite read his last name there. I don't know if it's Ober, but thank you, Randy. And uh, thank you, Andy, for those big black drill bits I showed a minute ago. Well, I received this in the mail, and I thought it was a gag gift at first, and in some ways, I guess it is. And there's boxes, also some nice pens. So I thought, well, what's in the box? Money? So I opened it up. another box. I open that up and another box and open that up and another box. Well that's the, the last of them but <laughs> I guess that uh, Randy is just telling me these boxes are still available. He worked someplace I guess where they use these and these uh, boxes with fantastic corners are still available. I watched a video at uh, Miller's Falls, Massachusetts, I believe it was. It was a real old vintage movie of women packing tools way back in the 40s, I think. And they had a machine that installed these corners. So that was interesting to see if you can find that video. But uh, thank you, Randy, for the gag, if it was, or the boxes, which sooner or later I will put to good use. Thank you, Paul, for swapping me this right-angle Bridgeport head for that Gleason sign. And there was a video on that, but in case you missed that, Paul came down from the suburbs and uh, brought this to me. And it has an R8 taper right here, and that fits right up into the quill and clamps onto the quill right there. And then at 90 degrees to that, is the spindle and that takes R8 collets as well so it allows me to do right angle milling. I haven't done it yet but I plan on using it and showing it in videos uh, when the time comes and it is Cheng Kai but it looks pretty awesome and well built. There is a slight reduction between the input and the output. I don't know exactly what the ratio is but Thank you, Paul, again for that, and I, I thought this was pretty neat, and I think maybe I got the better end of the trade, don't you? I picked up this genuine Bridgeport 6-inch milling machine vise uh, two weeks ago at Arnfest. It came with the crank. I suppose that crank alone would be 50 bucks, but... I was so excited, I didn't examine it that closely. I do have a 5-incher in the basement on my Bridgeport. You've seen that many times. But when I got it home, I realized, well, it doesn't have any jaws. And it's a little bit beat up in here. It is not as rusty as what it looks like, but that will all clean up. And I actually am going to paint it because there's not very much to paint. You know how I loathe painting. One thing I like about the Bridgeport vices is this wonderful hand hold right here where you can lift it. Now there are no keys on the bottom nor was there a swivel base and I don't really want a swivel base anyway because it raises the vise up too high on the milling machine in my opinion for most work and it doubles the weight. Well not doubles but it adds 30 pounds to the weight when you got to throw these things around. So I was lamenting that there was no jaws. And my neighbor came over, and he's a gunsmith, we talked a little bit about it, and so let me grab something here, I'll get right back to you. So I said to Richard that uh, there are no jaws, and I said I priced 
precision ground stock this size which would be 3 8 by 2 by whatever the length is well it's about $75 for a piece of that material so that's more than I paid for the vise and I considered making it the jaws out of this which is hot rolled and that would be fine but he said why don't you make a set of aluminum soft jaws so I believe that's exactly what I'm going to do and I will show that in a video when I do that so Look forward to that, or I look forward to that anyway. One last thing on this vise. The vise has a few peck holes in it. Now why there would be a hole drilled this far up here, I do not know. It's kind of beat up in here. I'll dress that down with a file. Why that would be damaged there but not drilled is uh, surprising to me. No doubt the jaws were mutilated and that's why they were took out. But when I saw this Bridgeport logo I became mesmerized and obsessed and had to have this vice and I'm sorry I did not get the man's name that I bought it from but he was nice enough to load it for me as well. Enough about this vice I'm sure you're thinking. Okay this is the last item in this video so bear with me but I received an email from a man up in New Lenox, Illinois. His name is Bob and thank you Bob and New Lenox is very near Joliet so I got in the car and I drove 70 miles and the traffic is horrendous up there on Route 80 just horrible truck traffic but anyway when I got to Bob's house spent about an hour we had a wonderful conversation he's a man that restores old motorcycles so he had an old Triumph there that was pretty awesome and a BSA and others and a very nice shop but he's gonna move so he said you can have this little filing machine well I've had filing machines before. I had one at the high school that was a Keller. A little more complicated than this one. And I had for a while a Dewall, but I got rid of that because it was so beat up. Now Bob gave me a few files. These machine files are kind of hard to find, but I got three different shapes there. There's no motor on this. Well that's not a big problem. Did you know that the table tilts in two directions? on a filing machine, sometimes called a die filer. And I never heard of this brand. Faustel. And it is not a wet crankcase, it's dry. There's a little bit of interference in there. I hear a clicking so it does need some adjustment or repair. I'm not sure just what the problem is, but I think I can get it going. I could use a coat of gray paint as well. So this is another winter project and a possible video, but possibly under there you can see how the uh, table tilting mechanism works, if we can get enough light in there. Doesn't weigh very much. And it's a cast iron base. Not wood, not stamped steel. Perhaps seven inches square. So that's a fun project, and that concludes this video. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next video.